Ok. Um, <clears throat> ok, so, so, so I think like so, something nice about, about hyperbolic geometry is that somehow as, as you have seen is kind of it, it, it has to do something a little bit something with the uh, other kind of subjects of mathematics right like uh, um, we could introduce you, you know it, ha it has some differential geometry and then uh, we spoke a little bit about area um, like a little uh, uh, a little bit of Lie groups appears uh, and uh, and now kind of a little bit of algebraic topology appears um, and one one uh, kind of something nice about this is that one way of okay so also like a, a little bit of you know functions of one complex variable like a little bit of complex analysis appears and something nice about this is that um, uh, one can think one can think both ways right that kind of that one can use the other subjects to understand here, but uh, but also something one way I like uh, to think about this is that uh, in those other areas, then one then, at some, then then one can think of hyperbolic geometry as providing natural concrete examples for the other for the concepts that appear in the, in the other areas. Um, um, yeah, and now so so what we are going. The, the, the purpose of today's lecture is to uh, exploit some facts concerning um, covering maps uh, to in our study of Fuchsian groups uh, and kind of in the geometry of Fuchsian groups. So somehow today today can be seen as you know like we are going to study a little bit some concepts from algebraic topology and we are going to apply whatever we learn uh, to, uh, to deepen a little bit our, um, our understanding of, of the geometry of Fuchsian groups. Um, okay, so, so some definition that I actually already presented some time ago, um, which is what is a covering map. Um, and the notion is based, the notion is based on the notion of um, uh, an open set in the codomain of a continuous function being evenly covered by the function. Right? So, so and, and the picture, well, the notion is is I I uh, I, uh, I remind you that um, I start with a continuous function and I say that an open set of the codomain is evenly covered by the function, or if you want, by uh, by the domain or whatever, um, if the inverse image of this open set, the inverse image of this open set, can be written as the disjoint union of open sets, each of which happens to be mapped homeomorphically to my given open set in the codomain by p right so if the if 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 i can decompose the inverse image as a disjoint union of open sets and each of these sets really is is kind of a copy of a copy of my original one and map homeomorphically up to the original one by p right so that what that was that was the definition of uh, what it means for an open set to be evenly covered and a continuous function is called um, covering map if every point in the in the codomain has some neighborhood uh, evenly covered by the function. Um, right? Or yeah, so, so this is what is written here. Um, and then um, kind of another reminder. Uh, if I have a, a topological space uh, and an action of a group on the space by uh, homeomorphisms, right? so that uh, each element of the group acts on Y by means of a, of a function which is a homeomorphism, in other words, it acting by 
gamma, by this uh, lowercase gamma, acting by this gamma, is a homeomorphism of y. Um, well, if I have such an action, uh, I say that it is properly discontinuous in the strong sense if uh, every point in the space has some open neighborhood, so belongs to some open set, uh, for which it happens that the only element of gamma uh, that doesn't that doesn't take that neighborhood sufficiently far, so that uh, um, the image intersection the original open set is is uh, non empty, so it is not very far. Uh, the only the only element of gamma that does that is the identity. Right? So if I take so so the 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 action is properly discontinuous in the strong sense if Bless you. If um, every time I sorry, if there is some open neighborhood around any given point, with the property that uh, if I take any element different from the identity, uh, this intersection is empty for that element different from the identity. Um, okay. Uh, and we saw that uh, if uh, if I have a torsion-free Fuchsian group, uh, the action, its action on the hyperbolic plane by Mobius transformations, um, <coughs> is properly discontinuous in this strong sense. Um, and an another example that we saw is that uh, um, if if you like more generally, if you give me any Fuchsian group possibly with elliptic elements, so possibly with torsion. Um, and I take the, the, the set of elliptic, fi elliptic fixed points. Um, so all the, all the points in the hyperbolic plane that are, fi that are fixed by some non-identity element of gamma. Um, if I exclude them from the hyperbolic plane, uh, then the action of gamma on the rest is uh, properly discontinuous. Well, first of all, um, this set is stable under under uh, the action of uh, gamma. So something, so so a point which is not fixed by any non-identity element. When I when I uh, act with any element of gamma, I land in another element not fixed by any non-identity element. Um, and this action is properly discontinuous in the strong sense. So, which means, which means that, um, well, okay, because of the following theorem, you see that what, what, I, what I have is if I have a top, any topological space and a properly discontinuous action, um, then the projection from the space to the orbit space is a covering map. Um, and somehow the, 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 the idea in the proof of this theorem is actually quite simple. So, so, because uh, you see here, here I take I take any point here, and then I say, okay, around that point, what would be uh, an evenly covered neighborhood? Then something I can do is is take any preimage of that point here, and around this point, around that point, there is some open neighborhood with this property. So I take I take that open neighborhood. And then you see the identity, well, fixes the na that neighborhood, and every non-identity element takes it sufficiently far away. And if you think about it, when uh, every time I, I apply an element of gamma, what I obtain is, is, a, is, is a kind of a, a part of the, of the inverse image under the projection of the image of this, because I'm kind of I'm precisely closing under the action of gamma here. Okay, and that is giving me the 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 you see this decomposition. So 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 the the the, the proof of this theorem, the, uh, at least the idea is uh, is is um, is not it's not hard. Um, and and so here. In this in this pre in this previous example, then what I have is that if I exclude the the the, the elliptic fixed points, and then if I exclude well 
then, yeah, if I just exclude them, then I have a um, then I have a, co a, a a covering map from this space to you see it would be uh, a oops h more sorry h minus f hyperbolic plane minus fixed points modulo the uh, the uh, action of gamma sorry sorry it, it would be from this space to h minus f modulo the action of gamma and this then this is a covering map and so this this is a um, um kind of th this example is uh, somehow a, mo a general a more general version of this example where we start allowing some torsion okay and then as an example and as an example i want you to think of uh of h but you know the, the disk the disk model of h and i want you to think of uh, gamma gamma to be so let, so let me let me draw the 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 disk right so this is the poincare disk uh, and then here i have the rotation by 180 degrees right so so i have i have gamma ga, uh, gamma here um uh, let's say the the group generated by by um, the Mobius transformation, let's say associated to rotation by 180 degrees is just um, minus. So it's what it's um. Uh, am I doing wrong? Yeah. Well, it's minus one zero. My, what am I doing wrong? Sorry. Ah, I'm suddenly. Rotation by 180 degrees. Right, and so. Right. Um, yeah. So okay. So I, I wanted. Yeah. So let, let me just write then. Z goes to uh, e to the pi i. Yes. Z. Right. And then let's say that this is this I define it to be rho, and then gamma. Is just a subgroup generated by rho, which has order two, right? and this and yeah. Um, okay, so let me move this one here. Uh, right, this one is elliptic of order two. Zero is a fixed point. So, okay, I can I can exclude it, right? And then, and then uh, in the orbit space, in the orbit space, I I, I have to. Um, identify every point with its antipole um, okay but even include let's even yeah, if I include let's say let's say before excluding zero I, I include it and when I when I do this identification topologically what I obtain is again a disk I mean if in the disk I identify every point with its antipole, what I obtain is again a disk topologically. Or if you want, let's say, oops, let's say this is a fundamental domain, right? And then I can obtain the, the quotient by identifying, you see, like this, this would be identified with this. But if you identify that topologically, it's a disk. Okay, now. It's a disk, and then if I if I exclude the origin here, then from the from the from the resulting disk, I just exclude the image of the of the origin. So what I have is so what I have what I obtain by applying this example is a cover of the of the punctured disk by itself, and actually actually that cover you are seeing it here. Here. Somehow, what I here, of course, what I've drawn is a disk, and then I I, I take this point away. But here, here, what I what I've done is is you know the the, the picture is something like um, yeah, I mean, um, it's 
it's it's like it's like a very thick ribbon just and then this is just kind of about the boundary of the ribbon um think it, think of it this way forget 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 up for a moment about the interior of the disk here forget for a moment about it and think only about the about 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 the bounding circle All right, and then uh and then cover it with another copy of the circle but then just just uh you know kind of going in two rounds right like uh like sometimes with our with the rubber bands right with the rubber bands have have you done this uh, right so that's what that's what this is doing All right but then now okay but then now now instead of just the circle think of you know doing it with a some slightly thicker ribbon Right? Do, do, uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Do you see it? Like now, instead of only with only only this, I mean, you, you you can still do it with a ribbon, right? Okay. But now do it with a thicker and thicker and thicker ribbon. And then in the very end, this this ribbon, if you think about it, kind of now think of the ribbon instead like this. Think of it like this, and and then and then thicken it towards the towards the center. At the very end, it's going to be a. Uh, a puncture disc, if you think about it. A puncture disc is kind of a very thick ribbon. No? And then but then and then just do the same that you were doing with the ribbon. And and what you obtain is, is this picture. So if you want here what you are seeing is the result of taking the taking the puncture disc, so the, the, the disc without its center, and saying okay and then and then then Fold it in such a way that that uh, that uh, both every point and its and its image on the row kind of they all they all lie together above above the projection. Yeah. So is it is it clear is it is it clear what's going on or or not or am I not being clear at all? Yeah. Right. So so something I'm not saying yet is that. Here, if I, if I, you see, if I, if I, so this is, this is, this is my D minus the fixed point of rho. And then here I would have to say D minus zero divided by gamma, right? By, by the subgroup generated by gamma. And this, this is a space, this is a space that topologically is again, again, at a, it, it's homeomorphic to again a puncture disk. And what I'm saying is that there is a commutative diagram here, where here you put the projection. So what I'm what somehow what I'm what I've been hiding is that that uh, one way to visualize this projection um, to this orbit space is to somehow just look at uh, the puncture disk. The puncture disk, and then the cover of it by itself. The, sorry, the cover of it by itself through the through the function z goes to z square. Because if you think about it, uh, you take a point here, go, and then ask yourself what are the inverse? What is the inverse image of this image? It's both z and minus z. So, so this function already identifies each point with minus itself do you agree yeah and that's and and if you think about it this function does the same right and then more formally one can actually you see here if you put the identity here and the identity here uh, actually this diagram commutes um okay and then and then uh somehow what i'm doing here is i'm drawing this puncture disc in such a way that that somehow that 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 points that should be identified kind of i already already uh lie together you know points that should be identified here to the same are already are, are kind of already vertically aligned like one when when one when one uh, um, 
takes like a, a rubber band and does this. Um, okay, and then here, here for instance, uh, uh, which I think is what we were asking, let's say that I take some point here, I take some point here, and then I take uh, its inverse image, it's here, it's this one, right? But kind of, they they like kind of on, diff on, on these two different sheets of the cover, and then here, here, let's say I take this, and then the inverse image would be kind of in the lower layer, would look like this, and then in the upper layer, I have I have this, and they are they are this they are completely disjoint. Right? Okay. Um, and just one more word is uh, the reason for me to include this today is that if you take uh, some course in Riemann surfaces, this is the typical behavior. Uh, not for the square, but for some z to the something. And this is the typical local picture that one sees. Okay, but let, okay, but maybe I, let me not get ahead of um, myself. Um, and now, two theorems. One is the, the, the so-called uh, curve lifting property. And what it says, what it says, is that if I have a covering map, so let me let me do some copy. Uh, let me copy paste this one, and then here, what do I want? I want. Yeah, and what it says is. If you if if, uh, if if you give me a covering uh, map like here, it's this is a cover of this again, excluding zero, okay, excluding zero, and then uh, every time you take a curve on the on the base space, so this is um so let me this is x, and this is the cover, and you take a curve here, so this is like a gamma from zero one to this one. Right? And then somehow the, it, the, 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 you visualize it like, I don't know, some curve there. Uh, let's say that it starts here, that gamma starts here, in this, in this point. Uh, and then what the theorem says is that, uh, now consider, consider the inverse image of this starting point. The inverse image, well, it's two points. Uh, and then for each of them, there is a unique curve on y that projects to the given curve gamma so for this point and starts in the, in the in the correct in the in the corresponding point so for this one there is some curve that that um, starts there starts in this inverse in this point in the inverse image of this of this one uh, and projects to gamma and for this one there's also a unique curve that starts in that point in the inverse image of, the, of my given starting point and projects to gamma. So every curve, every curve for, for each curve and every point in the inverse image of the starting point, you can lift the curve in a unique way. Okay. So for instance, let's let's uh, let me start let me start let me start again here, and then let's do let's do this. Which seems to go seems to go like uh, at least intuitively like once around zero, right? It, it seems to wind wind around zero once, and so I would be starting, oops, yeah, I would be starting somewhere, and either here or here, right? Uh, kind of assuming that the that the that the drawing that the picture is perfect, um, and then let's say that I start that I decide to start here, okay? so it looks like here. I go and then, um, mm -mm, and then I here I have to change sheet, and end in the other sheet. You see. And then on and then otherwise in for the other one I would have to do this and then here somehow I'm forced to to change sheet and then end in the other one. Okay, and that those would be that's that's how the two lifts of my given curve look like. Okay. Um, 
okay? And the, the, the proof of this theorem is not very hard, actually. Somehow the, the basic idea is that, uh, oops, is that, you know, if I draw the curve here, if I draw the curve here, uh, what I know is that since this is compact, this is compact, and now for each point here, there is an open neighborhood evenly covered. Compactness tells me that there, that this one can be covered by a finite set by by a finitely many open sets of x, each of which can be evenly covered. And then what I do, what I start doing is so okay. So let me do this so slightly bigger open sets, but the point is finitely many of them. Uh, and then what I start doing is, uh, so this one is evenly covered, it's evenly covered, so there and there, let's say. Uh, and then you see specifying, specifying as the starting point, the, the specifying where I want the lift to start amounts to, to saying, okay, I want to start in, 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 in either in either this um, in either this open set or in this open set uh, that cover evenly my original one and then okay and then I uh, when I specify the, the starting point then, then it amounts to specifying one of them and then you see somehow this this already tells me okay when you move on to the next one the, the choice is already done so if you chose this one you have to, to keep to, there's only one uh, uh, like a coherent choice and then somehow the rest is forced. So somehow that's that's the intuitive idea. Um, uh, for the formal idea, for, for the actual formal proof, what one does is um, for once one one once one uh, took these finitely many open sets evenly covered by by P, um, one uses them to produce a, a you know to to extract finitely many points there, and then one one really one really starts extend, you know, like one chooses the starting point and then one starts going in the extending in interval by interval, like for every small piece. Okay, um, the details, you can read them in Forster's book, I mean, which you can you can have a look at uh, in, the, in the bibliography of the course. Um, right, so, so, okay, so if I, if I, if, if you give me a covering map, and a curve here, uh, and and you look at where where the curve starts. Then for uh, then for each point that lands in that in that starting point under P, you can extend you you can lift in a unique way. Um, okay, and and next, Sorry. yeah.
Yeah, no, I mean this. Yeah, no, I mean this apparent crossing is like the apparent crossing in when you when you draw the client bottle, right? I mean the, when you draw the client bottle, uh, it seems it seems that it goes through itself, yeah. but it really doesn't go through itself. It's th that picture. I mean that picture is not perfect. Yeah, it's really it's not possible to. Yeah, yeah. So this picture is similar, and it's it's precisely because I decided to to draw it very thick. If I had decided to not draw it very thick, then I then I could have drawn it without this apparent crossing. Right. Yeah. So this crossing is not there. So so just think think of a, of a, like a thick ribbon, right? I mean, you can do it without the, the ribbon going through itself, right. right? And then and then I think in that if you think it, if you think in those terms, then then somehow there really isn't yeah, a problem, right? No problem. Yeah. Um, um, no, but it, but, it, but it's a good point. Yeah. So 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 the point is that the picture is not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So so curves can be lifted through 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 covers, and in order to lift a curve, all you need to do is uh, specify uh, specify which starting point do you want in the so-called fiber of this one. Yeah. Okay. Now the next theorem, whose proof is that one is a lot harder, is that now now let's say that okay we know that we can lift curves, but now how about this? Let's say that I have uh, now two curves, uh, and that they are homotopic to each other. Right. In other words. Uh, they are homotopic to each other in X, right? So in other words, uh, one can be continuously deformed to the other through a homotopy. So one of these continuous functions from the interval cross itself to X, right? And so somehow the, here, here I would be kind of sort of drawing some of the some of the intermediate curves in the continuous deformation. Um, okay, then then uh, then. This theorem, the, 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 curve lift, the curve lifting theorem, tells me each of them. So let's say, so let's say for 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 this point, I can I can pick I can pick either this point or this point. So let's pick one. Let's let's pick this one. Yeah. So let's pick that one. Okay. And then once I pick that one, then of course I can I can lift both of them to a curve starting there. So I can lift. I, can, I have that lift, and then I also have the other lift. Some, oh, okay, the, the picture is terrible, but um, something like that. Uh, and then the question is: Okay, so so if here I know that one of, one one of them can be deformed to the other, is it true that? These two also can be deformed to each other. Right? So is it true that when I lift this and I lift this, the 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 results are homotopic again? And and for instance, in particular, is it true that you see here 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 I took the two curves to start and then in the same point, but then when I lift them, I only say okay, start here and lift, start here and lift. But I mean, how do I know that they end? In, to begin with, how do I know that they end in the same point? Right? I, I drew it already, kind of, sort of suggesting that. But even that, I would say, one would have to prove. And all of that is what this next theorem asserts: that if I have a, a covering map and I have two curves uh, which are homotopic relative to endpoints, so these are these two curves, um, then then the curves. Then the curves that lift lift them, so that i.e. that under the projection are mapped to my original uh, curves in the base space. Um, if I have lifts, but also chosen in such a way as to start in the same point, right? So so here I choose the same starting point for for the lift of each of them. Then those lifts, which now would be this and the and this other one. Satisfy that that they end again in the same point, so this point is really well defined. And second, they are homotopic relative to the endpoints. Okay, uh, and actually, and the proof 
the proof is, you see, kind of is similar but harder. Uh, and and is a now if I have a homotopy, so somehow now I, I would have I would have an H from zero one cross zero one to my space, right? And then somehow the image, the image, the image looks like like uh, something like a sort of solid here. I mean like a, and that so by sort of I mean that somehow it, it fills space, right? That it fills X somehow. Um, and then the idea is this is compact because it's the image of zero one cross zero one. Uh, and each point therein has um, an open neighborhood evenly covered. Compactness tells me you can you can choose a finitely many uh, open sets still covering this this whole thing. And then and then you start and then you start um, lifting little by little, right? And then, but then things become a bit technical because uh, because before we could go in a very orderly way. You know, just kind of from left to right, but now we have to go like from r left to right and bottom upwards, and then and then in in in, in going in going, uh, let's say I move a little bit to the right and then upwards, and then my open my open sets can start shrinking up when I go up. So okay, um, so so one needs to be more careful, uh, but it's doable, yeah. And in the end, it's not rocket science, but. Um, uh, but so I, I prefer to not go into, into all the details, but rather refer you to where you can find them. Um, okay, and also it's also in in, um, in in this famous book of Hatcher in algebraic topology. And just one little warning. So here I wrote Hausdorff, but actually it's not needed. So this this is more general than just Hausdorff. And in any case, it doesn't hurt because the spaces I'm I'm talking about they are all house or so. Okay. So conclusion: the, the um, curves can be lifted through cover through covering maps, uh, and given a curve, in order to 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 to, to determine a, a specific lift, all I need is to to deter, to, to specify the starting point. Uh, and if I have an homotopies, homotopies can be lifted too. Okay. Um, now, the, this is the, the, the conce one consequence is that um, now we can put the the, um, uh, the fundamental group of the base space to act on on uh, on each fiber. Yeah. So. By fiber, what do I mean? I mean any set of the form inverse image of a single point. Okay, that's what I mean by fiber. Um, and how would the action be? You see, like I would, uh, I take I take a point in the in the base space, right? Um, and then the action the action of a closed curve. Let's say the action. I take a closed curve, let's say this one, and what I what, what this consequence says is that now if I look now at the at the inverse image of this point, so the inverse image would be this point and this point, uh, and then on the set whose elements are this this point. So in this case, are in this case it's only two. Um, the action of this closed curve is, is what does it say? Is uh, lift, lift, lift the curve. Uh, take sorry. Consider the lift of this curve that starts in the given point. So the action on this point to to to, to obtain it, I need to lift this one with this starting point. Okay, so I lift it. Um, yeah. So and then and then endpoint. So in this in this case the uh, in this case the action of this closed curve on this point is this point. And let's say for this point, what's the action of this curve on this point? Well, same recipe, right? So I need to consider the lift that starts here. Okay. So 
start there and start going. Um, yeah. And then it and then take final point. Yeah. So so you see the action so so this curve really uh, exchanges these two kind of the action the action of the, the action of this curve on this one is the other one and on the other one is this one okay um, and it's a right action so it's yeah okay and this is yeah so so but so this is very i would say this is already very beautiful because it's you see fundamental group of the base starts to to permute things here in the kind of in the fiber in the inverse image of this point so it, so it starts acting on the on the space above on the space on top okay and then the 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 place where everything comes together is the simply connected uh, covers um so before 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 this let me let me let me uh, say remind so a topological space is said to be simply connected if well first of all it's path connected so that's going to be part of the definition so between any two points there always is a continuous curve connecting them and every time you have two two curves two continuous curves uh, beginning at the same point and ending at the same point um, they are they are homotopic relative to endpoints yeah so so every time so so path connected and every time you have two points and you connect them arbitrarily with continuous curves the two curves are homotopic so it's always possible to deform one into onto the other within the space right oops oops here i said y sorry and i said x here sorry I, here i should have said y here it's y sorry about that um okay so given any two points any two curves are deformable onto each other Deformable, deformable continuously onto each other. Okay, so for instance, this does not happen here, right? Because uh, here I'm, ex I'm really taking is the disk without, without the center. So for instance, if I take this curve and this curve, well, I have, I would have to prove it, right? The proof is not so easy. But but it ends up happening that that um, that this curve cannot be continuously deformed to this curve, and at least intuitively it should be expectable because uh, somehow the idea is that any possible deformation has at some point to go through through the origin. So it kind of has at some point abandons the space. So, and, but of course, but a formal proof is harder, right? Because I would have to show between, be, you, you see, I have these two curves, and then I, I would have to show uh, there does not exist any continuous function from the interval across the interval to the space, such that blah, blah, blah. Right? So I would have to take an arbitrary continuous function, blah, blah, and then somehow show that, that uh, it cannot, that something fails about it. Yeah? So the formal proof, uh, is a lot harder than than what the intuition um, says, um, and actually we are going to have it as a consequence of what I'm, what hopefully I'm going to be able to cover. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to cover today, but um, okay, uh, that's a simply connected space when uh, for any two points, any two curves connecting them can be deformed onto each other continuously. And, and the space is called locally path connected um, if every open set so, so you see I have y I have y uh, and every open every open subset uh, 
can be written as a union. In other words, around every point, uh, around every point in this open subset, there is there is some even smaller open subset which is path connected. Okay, so that's locally that that's when I, that that's the notion of local path connectedness. You see, for every open set that you give me and every point there, there is a, an open contained in my, in my given open subset, which is lo which is path connected. Yes, so is, is, is that notion clear? So I would be not Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So this local path connectedness is, like, is is something like it doesn't matter how how small you want to look at. You know, you, you have your space, and 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 it doesn't matter how small you want to 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 to, to look at. You can always find connected neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, for instance, the uh, um, Rn is locally path connected. Um, okay. Uh, now, suppose I have a covering map. Uh, a vector transformation or automorphism of the covering map, sorry, or automorphism of the covering map is any homeomorphism from the top space, from kind of from the covering space to itself that, that, that makes this diagram commute which means that you see h uh, h of y p applying p to that is equal to p of y for every y right i mean this commutativity means uh, h h h p is the same as p right so 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 h p is the same as p which means that which means that you see along fibers, uh, H permutes them because it sends Y to something in the same fiber. That's what it means. So, so a, 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 a deck transformation or automorphism of the of the of the covering map is a homeomorphism of, of the big space that that uh, per, that, fi that that permutes permutes each fiber. Um, Such deck transformations form a form a, a group on their composition. So it, I would say it's clear that they form a group on their composition. It's the group of deck transformations. Uh, and what the the, the 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 theorem that we are that we are about to pursue is that if you give me a Fuchsian, uh, if you give me a torsion fee a torsion free Fuchsian group, such Fuchsian group, um, well that, that this is going to be obvious that the, the Fuchsian group is uh, is canonically the group of deck transformations of the corresponding cover. And this I would say is clear. Um, and what I want is to relate that to the fundamental group of the base space. As you as you have seen already, whenever I have a covering map uh the 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 the, 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 the fundamental group of the base space starts acting on the on the on the top space on the big space and somehow what i want somehow what i want now is to what what i'm going to pursue is when uh, when uh, when the covering map is it goes from the hyperbolic plane to the orbit space and i want the Fundamental group of the orbit space to act on the hyperbolic plane. That's kind of what I want, and then in the end, I'm going to see that that what appears there is the group is the Fuchsian group itself. That's going to be the end, the, the kind of the, the final theorem. Um, all right. So now take two spaces uh, with uh, you see uh, um, a covering map with y simply connected and locally path connected for instance 
why could be um, the hyperbolic plane? Because think about the disk or about the upper half plane. It is uh, it is path connected. It is locally path connected, and it is simply connected. Right? If, if you give me any two curves in the let's say in the, think about the the Poincaré disk, just about the disk. Uh, if you give me two points in the disk in the in the in the in the Poincaré disk and any two curves between the two connecting the two points, they can certainly be deformed to each other within the Poincaré disk without abandoning the Poincaré disk. So it's um, it's simply connected. It's locally path connected. Yeah. So so somehow that's that's the situation I have in mind when y is the hyperbolic plane. Okay. And now suppose I have this covering map. Yeah, and and I pick a, you see I pick a point here in Y, so like a um, in, as, as if I were picking a point in the in the hyperbolic plane. And what I what I what the, the situation I'm going I'm about to consider is I, I take that point, so it's it's here. I take I take its image under under the covering. So now I'm here, and now I take my loop gamma based at, at, at this point P of Y naught. So it's, the, it's this one, um, right? So 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 far, what I know is that that this loop gamma uh, acts on the on the fiber of this point. So in particular, it acts on the on this point Y naught itself, right? because because the gamma that you are seeing there acts on the on the fiber of this. Remember that fiber is just inverse image of a single point. So, uh, so fiber of this is is just all of this. And what what we saw is that this one, that any closed curve base here acts on this one. How? Well, whenever you give me a point, let's say this y naught, um, I just I just take the lift of gamma that starts there. And I do, and, and I just look at where it ends, and that's that's the result of the action. So this this would be this point that you are seeing here would be y not star gamma. Okay. Or or yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Now think of just what happened at the, just at the level of this point. This point is sent to this other point in the same fiber, and now I ask myself, okay, can this is can this behavior of sending this point to this point be part of a whole homeomorphism which permutes every fiber? So can this kind of can this very discrete behavior? I mean, so discrete that this kind of is just the behavior on one point, right? But can this behavior be part of a whole homeomorphism of a whole deck transformation? And what the what the theorem says is yes, and it's and 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 it and uh, and it's it's unique. So such such deck transformation with the with that behavior, with that behavior at that given point, is unique. That's what it says. And not only that, you see, somehow this was so somehow somehow this is really determined by just starting with my y naught and starting with this. That's how I I could determine. I'm going to be able to determine the, this whole deck transformation uniquely. Um, but you see, what I'm doing is to this closed curve here that you are seeing here. I'm associating a uh, a, a whole deck transformation, so something in the in the automorphism in, in the in the group of deck transformations of P. Um, well, this this is an isomorphism between the fundamental group of the base and the group of deck transformations of the cover. Um, so the group of deck transformations kind of each deck transformation goes from Y to itself, right? Um, 
Okay, so before going into the proof, because I, I only have uh, 10 more minutes, uh, the, the proof the proof is a bit heavy, but it, it, it does have, um, it is conceptual, even though it's a bit heavy. Um, so I would say it's a very nice proof. Um, but let me, let me, let me uh, do it um, maybe on Monday. And let me, uh, yeah, let me draw a conclusion, like a consequence from that, um, which is that uh, if you give me a torsion, a torsion free Fuchsian group, and you give me a point in the hyperbolic plane, so this would be like my point why not in the, in the theorem that I just described, um, then I have a, a group isomorphism between uh, my, fu my given Fuchsian group and the fundamental group of the bay of the orbit space. Now, why is this a consequence of the previous one? Well, let, let me move back to the statement. And then think of y as being the hyperbolic plane. So y here, let's say, equal to h. Uh, so yeah, so let me write it maybe maybe uh, maybe here. Y is equal to h, and x is the orbit space. H modulo the action of my torsion-free Fuchsian group gamma. I know that be, since when when this is uh, torsion-free, uh, the projection is uh, a covering map. This I know. I know as I as I said a few moments ago that H is um, path connected, locally path connected, um, and uh, simply connected. And so, and so I can apply, I can apply this theorem and obtain that that the the fundamental group of this one, this fundamental group is isomorphic to the group of deck transformations of P, right, of, the, of my cover. Well, think about gamma itself. And I mean, think, think about what P does, if you want. Think about what P does. What P does is every time two points in H are gamma congruent, it identifies them. So, 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 every gamma orbit is collapsed. You know, if you give me one gamma orbit, that gamma orbit is collapsed to one point uh, here. Okay, and now, okay, and actually, the the the, fi the fibers of P are the orbits. If you think about it, what did I say a, a, a fiber was? Was inverse image of a single point. If I take a single point here, its fiber, its inverse image on their piece, precisely a gamma orbit. Okay. It's precisely a gamma orbit. And think about it. Gamma, each, each, each element of gamma is a self-homeomorphism of the hyperbolic plane. And of course, it sends every, every orbit inside itself, right? I mean, it permutes the orbit. So, Every element of gamma is a deck transformation for this for this one. It's kind of pretty much P was kind of engineered that way. Um, okay. Now there is now. So so what I know is that this one then contains gamma and something a little a bit less. A bit harder to, to show, but which is still true, is that uh, here I have equality. So if you if you take now any self homeomorphism of Y, which permutes every fiber, it's actually it's actually uh, an element in gamma. This is a bit harder. We can discuss it. It's a bit harder, but but um, but here I, I actually have equality. And so you see, I have a, an isomorphism between the fundamental group 
of the orbit space and gamma. Um, okay, so I would say this this is this is really beautiful. Now, if now if you if you trace what this means, if you trace what this means in terms of gamma itself, what you obtain is um, is just the formula that I'm stating here. Ah, okay. There's some, there is one piece of information I haven't explained what it is. Okay, this I uh, sorry, this I will explain a bit um, next time. Um, Okay, now as a corollary, you see, I would say something which is, I would say dramatic, but I don't know, I mean, I would say um, spectacular, is that if you give me a torsion free Fuchsian group, the orbit space is not, is, it is never a compact torus. Why? If it were, if, if it were, you see, torsion free, right? Torsion free. But if it were a uh, uh, compact torus, so S1, topologically S1 times S1, um, then, then we would have, gamma isomorphic to the fundamental group of, well, of S1, times S1, based at uh, whatever point, let's say 1, 1 as base point. Uh, but this one is, um, well, this one with some work can, can show that it's set cross Z or set plus Z. Um, okay, but we proved that every abelian, you see in particular gamma would be abelian, but we prove that every abelian Fuchsian group is cyclic. This one is not cyclic. So this is impossible. This is impossible. So what happens? This is impossible. So it's impossible to obtain the compact torus as, a, as the quotient of H by a torsion free Fuchsian group. Um, then, kind of just to, 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 to finish for today, um, this 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 is kind of important in, in, in the sense that that then something you can automatically say um, is that now if you if you just consider kind of the 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 torus as a just as a real two dimensional manifold and then you ask okay is it possible to put a hyperbolic metric on it in other words uh, you know can I can we define some Riemannian metric uh, such that the the curvature is constant is negative con is constant negative or constant negative one and the answer is no because of this theorem. Um, but okay, but okay, but that 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 starts escaping the scope of the of the course. Um, yeah, and then I I run out of time, so I think next time I'm going to continue with. Uh, with what what I what I didn't finish today, um, and and what else? Yeah, and then and then maybe by the end of next lecture, uh, we can speak a little bit about uh, categories, functors, and natural transformations. So that maybe at, in the last lecture I can uh, talk a little bit about uh, moduli spaces. And okay, so see you on Monday.